Our entrance hymn is number 194, Christ Be Beside Me. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with the Spirit. Good morning, everyone. Today gives a change of face. I'm Deacon Doug. <clears throat> Father Barry mentioned yesterday the feast of St. Columba, and he only mentioned two churches, those in Culloden and those in Bantry. But there is a third making up the Trinity, more locally in the Bridge of Dawn, where I'm normally based. I also assist at the Mass at St. Peter's in the Castlegate. So it's pleasing to have a change of scenery for me today, and hopefully for you watching from wherever you are. We are in Wednesday, the 10th week in Ordinary Time, where we hear in Matthew's Gospel. Jesus reminding us that he came to fulfill the law, bringing it into its intended purpose. So, brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves for celebration of this communion service and call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right, and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us listen to the word of God. A reading from the first book of the Kings. King Ahab called all Israel together and assembled the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. Elijah stepped out in front of all the people. How long, he said, do you mean to hobble first on one leg and then the other? If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal, follow him. But the people never said a word. Elijah then said to them, I, I alone, am left as a prophet of the Lord, while the prophets of Baal are 450. 
Let two bulls be given us. Let them choose one for themselves, dismember it and lay it on the wood, but not set fire to it. I, in my turn, will prepare the other bull, but not set fire to it. You must call on the name of your God, and I shall call on the name of mine. The God who answers with fire is God indeed. The people all answered, agreed. Elijah then said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one bull and begin, for there are more of you. Call on the name of your God, but light no fire. They took the bull and prepared it, and from morning to midday they called on the name of Baal. O Baal, answer us, they cried. But there was no voice, no answer, as they performed their hobbling dance round the altar they had made. Midday came and Elijah mocked them. Call louder, he said, for he is a god. He is preoccupied, or he is busy, or he has gone on a journey. Perhaps he is asleep and will wake up. So they shouted louder and gashed themselves, as their custom was, with swords and spears, until the blood flowed down them. Midday passed, and they ranted on till the time of offering is presented. But there was no voice, no answer, no attention given to them. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come closer to me. And all the people came closer. He repaired the altar of the Lord, which had been broken down. Elijah took twelve stones, corresponding to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come. Israel shall be your name and built an altar in the name of the Lord. Round the altar he dug a trench of a size to hold two measures of seed. He then arranged the wood, dismembered the bull, and laid it on the wood. Then he said, fill four jars with water and pour it on the holocaust and on the wood, and this they did. He said, do it a second time. They did it a second time. He said, do it a third time. They did it a third time. The water flowed round the altar and the trench itself was full of water. At the time when the offering is presented, Elijah the prophet stepped forward. Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, he said, let them know today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant that I have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Lord, answer me, so that this people may know that you, Lord, are God and are winning back their hearts. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the holocaust and wood and licked up the water in the trench. When all the people saw this, they fell on their faces. The Lord is God, they cried. The Lord is God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be to God. of joy 
in your presence at your right hand happiness forever preserve me god finding refuge in you from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not imagine that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish but to complete them. I tell you solemnly, till heaven and earth disappear, not one dot, not one little stroke, shall disappear from the law until its purpose is achieved. Therefore, the man who infringes even one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be considered the least in the kingdom of heaven. But the man who keeps them and teaches them will be considered great in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. These last two days have probably, you've heard, the two most quoted parts of Matthew's Gospel. On Monday, we heard the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus was preaching to the crowds the wonderful Beatitudes, fulfilling the demands of the Decalogue that challenge Christians to aspire to a life of holiness. Yesterday, Jesus, in the ferial readings, continued his teaching to his followers on their being the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And Father Peter's homilies on these two themes truly enlightened my mind and hopefully yours also. Today, Jesus was still on that mount, teaching the crowds. There was no lockdown. He was sitting on the ground, and I would assume that the crowds there also would have been sitting and listening attentively to his wise words. This last weekend, the weather wasn't so fine. And when I listen to Father Barry, he always says, the sun is shining, the grass is growing, and the birds are singing. But they were a few weeks ago. That weekend, the weather was lovely. I went for my walk. We experienced glorious weather for a, a number of weeks. We were still in semi-lockdown. The government had said we were at stage one of a four-stage route. Some rules had been lifted as we were being allowed to go for a couple of walks per day. Some shops were beginning to open. We were allowed to have members of the same household around to sit in the garden. On the Sunday, I was sitting in my garden and I could hear my own neighbours who were having their own family members round. There was a lot of hilarity going on next door. They were all enjoying themselves. They had several members of their family in attendance. We were, however, still on alert. We were still being advised to adhere to the basic rules that had been set, and the two-metre rule still applies. The laws and rules had been set for the good of the people. They were a guide to control the virus, a guide for our own existence. At six o'clock, I went in to watch the news. The cameras were panning the area of some of the beaches and parks down south. The picture showed crowds and crowds of people on the beaches and the parks. They were absolutely jam-packed. We often hear the phrase, you can't see the wood for the trees. And watching the news programme, you could not see the sand or the grass for the crowds. For that day, the fundamental two-metre rule 
did not appear to apply. The fundamental rules that Moses was given by God were also a guide to our own existence. Quite simply, they were the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods before me, no false idols. Don't take the Lord's name in vain. Keep the Sabbath day holy. Honour your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear fault witness against your neighbour. You shall not covet your neighbour's belongings. Today's gospel, Jesus clearly sets forth his relationship to the law. He is a thoroughly observant Jew who is devoted to keeping the law. Many times throughout the Bible we hear how the scribes and Pharisees try to adapt their own interpretations of the law. They also produce a further 613 rules considered necessary to observe the basic law. They were forever trying to catch Jesus out about the law. They believe he had broken, working on the Sabbath, not keeping it sacred, about healing those who had been oppressed by the devil. Last week we heard how the Sadducees tried to trick him on the woman who married the seven brothers, who died, leaving no children. The question they posed to him, to her, whom at the resurrection will she be the wife of? They also considered him breaking the laws, eating with tax collectors. There are several other examples throughout this, the scriptures. Today, we hear how Jesus came to bring out the real meaning of the law, simply because behind the written and oral law, there was one great principle which the scribes and Pharisees had not fully grasped. He explained here that the law has its values and he is not interfering with the laws that were given to Moses by God. He goes on by putting himself on the same level as God and above the law, and in general terms pointing that the true practice of the law must go beyond mere formal compliance. We must grow, and we know that the present grows out of the past. We are currently going through different phases of this lockdown. The past will not be forgotten, but we can't live in the past. We must look at the future. We are being given, as they say, green shoots by our Scottish bishops at this moment on the opening up of the churches for private prayer and eventually masses, which will soon be held once again. Live streaming has been useful, but we should not get used to this form of celebration of the Mass. We need live participation. Sacrosanctum Concilium, the constitution of the liturgy promulgated by Pope Paul VI, says, in the restoration and promotion of the sacred liturgy, the full and active participation is required by all the people in the aim to be considered before all else. Participation is important. We participate through liking and loving, love God and love our neighbour. In doing this, I'm sure the world will be a better place. Today's short reading in the morning office tells us nothing can come between us and the love of Christ, even if we are troubled or worried or being persecuted, or lacking food or clothes, or being threatened or even attacked. These are the trials through which we triumph, by the power of him who, lived, who loved us. It's Romans 8, 35. I think sometimes in our society we have a tendency to make things complicated. So today, let us pray for the gift of simplicity, and for the grace to make love a reality in our hearts and in our minds. My brothers and sisters, let us bring to mind our needs and requests before our God. <clears throat> for the Holy Catholic Church and Pope Francis, that their appeals for peace 
in every land enduring war, protests and violence bear much fruit. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For all world leaders, that they listen to God's will and that they promote unity, peace and justice through the decisions that affect the world we live in. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For a renewed awareness of human life, may the God of compassion draw near to those who take life for granted and embrace them in his mercy. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For the sick, the suffering, and the homeless, and those who have no one to pray for, may they be lifted up from st the storms of life. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious hear us. Today, as chaplain of the, the seafarers, I would also like to pray for all seafarers, especially those who are unable to return home, who are stuck on their vessels, or even stuck in hotels at the moment, due to the current restrictions. Lord, hear us. And for all those who have died, especially those close to us, that they be brought safely into God's eternal kingdom. And this morning, I would like to pray for Captain Ashish's mum, Saraj Satish Prahbar. I got a message this morning that she had actually died of a heart attack yesterday. Some of you will remember he was the I would say good captain on board the Malavia 7, which was stranded here for 18 months. May she and all the others rest in peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, Lord rest in peace. Yes. Let us now pause for a moment to add our own silent intentions. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, us. Loving Father, when we call you answer, could to continue to build up our love for you and help to spread your word. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we ask our Mary's intercession also, as we say, Hail Mary, Mary full of grace, grace, the Lord be with you. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our, off, our offertory hymn is number 635, Sweet Sacrament Divine. Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that we may, by the help of your mercy, may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. and an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to separate from you again. Amen.
pray. At this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may bring about unity in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So thank everyone for participating, active participation it says, those of you at home and those who have helped me out here today. And we, we also pray for Father Barry. The Lord be with you. And, with you. and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks. Amen. Thanks. 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 And I will. Our recessional hymn is number 174. Blessed are the pure in heart.